So this is the kind of chief that, you know, this is the kind of staff that I'm, you know, I'm bringing into the city. People that care about the city, people that care about the residents. So we had, uh, <clears throat> uh, there's a lot of grants that we applied for. You know, there's, uh, there's some great news coming. You know, I'm not gonna announce it yet. You know, we, you know, one of the things that we talked about, you know, before is Dearborn Heights was isolated for many years. You know, uh, with the county, you know, with the state, you know, with like the neighboring cities. So we're part of two, there's, we're part of the Downriver community and we're also part of the CWW, which is Conference of Western Wayne. So for the first two weeks I was on a job, you know, I was going to these meetings and, you know, engaging with other mayors, engaging with other supervisors, supervisors like a mayor in a township, trying to see what we can do together. You know, we had an issue with this one, uh, I mean, everybody knows Highland Park, you know, they were not paying their water bills. Well, guess what? We were paying for their water bills. It's all the cities, surrounding cities was paying for their water bills. And I'm talking tens and thousands of dollars a month that it was coming out of taxpayers' money, the Dearborn Heights residents and other cities. So we got together, all of us as a community. And that's, that's what matters is when you all work as a community, trying to do what's best you know, for your citizens. Every mayor that I've talked to, every supervisor that I dealt with, you know, they have the same passion for their people, for their citizens. We actually had, on a, we, we put through council several times uh, resolutions, you know, basically that say the council, everybody is on board to hold the state. We went after the state because the state was allowing this to happen. And guess what, just recently, the state, you know, lost a case. You know, there was a federal uh, case, fed, uh, went in front of a federal judge. So they held that community accountable so they had to pay their bills so they can help us out. And that's some of the reasons why a lot of water bills, a lot of residents, they complain about their water bills. It's, it's, it's caused because of this. And also, we took out a lot of loans. You know, we took out a huge bond, over $20 million, that we're supposed to do the CSO projects, which is mandated by the, by the state by Eagle, it's Eagle is like EPA for the state. And also we're supposed to replace all our water mains, I mean all, all, I'm sorry, the water meters. The water meters are so outdated, so we have to replace them. So now because of CSO projects, you know, because of COVID, all the prices shot sky high. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me, so now we're trying to get grant money to offset um, what we actually could have, you know, what we should have paid, you know, uh, like say the, the water mains from, I mean, uh, obviously don't, don't quote me on this. I think it was like eight, eight nine million dollars was gonna cost us to replace, I'm sorry, the, the, the water meters. Well, I know now it's gonna be a lot more than that. So everything, like I said, sh uh, sh shots got high during COVID. So this is some of the stuff that, you know, were, you know, that, we, that I encountered, you know, being, on, uh, be, being as a mayor. A lot of things that, can, you know, is coming our way and, um, we're trying to do the best we can, you know, to get our city back back on track. I can tell you, a lot of companies, just to give you one example of how they neglect in our city. There was a company that was doing work in both Dearborn and Dearborn Heights. When one of, the one of our city engineers went there to look at the quality of work, it was so like substandard for our city. And he's looking at the Dearborn side, it was like world-class job. And he's like, hey, what the hell is going on here? Why are you doing this crappy job for Dearborn Heights and you're not doing a good, you know, you're doing it for Dearborn but not Dearborn Heights? You, anybody know what the answer was? Dearborn Heights doesn't check their work. <coughs> That's why. It's because nobody was, nobody was looking. People were sleeping at the wheel. So this is some of the stuff that we're encountering, you know, you get some roads, you know, like say the road's supposed to be like six to seven inches uh, thick with concrete. There's some roads that are two to three inches. And now like all the stuff is now on us that we have to fix. So we have a limited budget for roads. So, you know, so, uh, was young, I'm gonna call a young lady asked me this question earlier about the roads, you know, like, you know, fix her street, you know, like, you know, if it's on, uh, um, which is a county road. You know, there's some streets, are streets uh, owned by the city, there's some by the county, there's some by the state. You know, and you can let us know, we'll talk to the right authority, you know, or uh, 
uh, right entity to do the roads, but we do have a lot of responsibility for our city streets, but our budget's so limited right now to fix roads. So what we started doing, we're, uh, we have a company that actually goes in and assesses all the roads, and they give it a rating. So the worst roads, believe it or not, you know, it's like if you go in there, you patch a road, then it kind of drops down, so the rating is higher, so they don't replace it. So it's like you want your road to be bad so you can get replaced. So we, we did last year, you know, we had a little bit of money uh, left over. So we went, instead of replacing the whole street, we started replacing slabs, which was very effective. We started, um, uh, we actually did a lot more streets and a lot of people were happy because, you know, I mean, some roads you got a little patch that you can just replace a big slab, you know, and you don't have to replace the second or a third, then go to the fourth and replace that, which is, you know, very cost effective for us. So this is some of the stuff that we're doing. Anyway, I can just go on and on with this. There's, a, like I said, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And uh, I always say I jumped into the hornet's nest with this, with this position. But, uh, you know, I, uh, like I said, I asked for it and I'm not gonna back down. I'm gonna do what I, what I can and everything I can for our city. Thank you. Can you please have a seat down there, so. Okay. Uh, I do thank you, Mr. Mayor, for that. First question. Ten months as an appointed mayor. One and a half years as elected mayor. Look at Dearborn Heights before Bill Bezzi came to it and after. How can you compare them? Okay. So, I, again, I'm going to try not to, uh, there's some stuff I can't talk about, you know, because there's stuff, there's still a few things are under investigation with, uh, with our PD. Uh, but I can tell you, I mean, just to give you an example, you know, uh, the system was broken in the beginning. You know, there was no policies, there was no procedures. You know, uh, right now, even right now, we're still working on policies and procedures. We have, uh, we, we had a hard time hiring people. Obviously, our pay, I mean, everybody knows, you know, we hear it all the time, our pay is not good. Um, but one of the things that was done in the past, you know, uh, in the many, many years ago, they decided to uh, go to a four-day work week. So employees, they work, th they work four days a week, 32 hours, and they get paid for 36 hours. They get a lot of vacations, a lot of sick time, and a lot of calm times. So you got a lot of people that come in, they can probably take half a year off and they can still get paid for the, for the whole time because of the amount of time that we're, we're giving them. So my HR director, she went, uh, she looked at uh, a base pay for a person that just, a person, just a high school uh, person working, you know, the four days a week. And she calculated with the pay, and this is a person just, I'm not talking about the high end, just like an average, makes about 70 something thousand dollars a year you know, with their pension, with their, you know, health care, and, uh, and also, obviously, their pay. Because you take in account everything that I mentioned, you know, the equivalent to about 70 something thousand dollars. So one of the things, so we just negotiated a contract, you know, with, uh, and that, that's something that, you know, I, I have an amazing HR director. You know, we brought in a great attorney that is helping us with negotiation. And um, they're looking at the, Everything that is non-value added. So instead of like giving somebody like all, you, you come in, you work one year and you got like, you know, 15 days vacation. So we take some of the vacations away, then put it as, a, as an incentive, you know, to higher pay. So right now we're negotiating several contracts and this is what we're trying to do. So with the, with the police department, this is some of the stuff that we did. You know, took out something, but then yet you compensate uh, through pay. So this is one of the biggest issues that we're having right now is the pay and try to increase it. But we have several 
uh, several initiatives that we're working on just to make sure that we can get back on track and be competitive with other city with pay. Okay. Uh, how far can you say you are satisfied with what you have done so far? Well, you know, I'm never satisfied with what I've done. I've always, I, I'm, I'm very mission oriented. Until we get our city back on track and just go propel forward, I'm, I'm, I'm never happy. I, uh, I always, one of the things that, you know, we learned, you know, when I worked for Boeing, you know, they, we, uh, they sent us to training, the Carnegie training, and also, uh, you know, they spec like, they really stress world class. You know, this is something that resonated in my head, you know, world class. And this is something that I want to do. Until our city, everything in our city is world class, I'm not going to be satisfied. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, corruption is ugly. But it's real. Yes. Tell us about corruption in the city. Well, I'm going to give you an example. When I, I was on council, and like I said, you know, certain people, they know this here because they, they, were, they were present. You know, they were saying the same thing they're saying now as they, did, they were saying before as they are now. We, we had, when I was knocking on doors in 2017 when I ran, I knocked on some people's doors and I thought they were crazy. They were telling me something that didn't make sense to me. They said, you know, my grandparents used to own this house. And these, uh, these people, they bought their house for nothing. I'm like, what do you mean? They said, you know, they came in, they inspected their house. They said their house needs about fifteen to $20,000 in repair. I'm like, I'm, you know, I thought, you know, what, you know, that's an exaggeration. But when I heard it multiple dozens of times, I'm like, you know what? Now it's stuck in my head. So I started kind of listening and start taking notes. So a year into office as a councilman, I get a call by this lady, and she's like, I think you should meet this. Uh, I want you to meet somebody. And, you know, one of the things I believe I'm very, you know, I'm, I'm religious. You know, God puts us on earth for a reason, and God puts us in certain path for a reason. This lady wanted me to meet uh, the senior citizen, and um, I told her, yeah, I'll meet with her. So I met with her at a local coffee shop. I mean, not local, but another city local shop coffee shop, and uh, she was telling me that somebody took her house, stole her house, basically. I'm like, I was on a council. I'm like, how did that happen? She told me the same thing. She was going to list her house for sale. Somebody came up to inspect. I, again, I'm not mentioning any names, but you can see it. It's in the paper. You can go back to 2018, 2019. It's in the paper, newspaper. So they had... Um, this person came in and said, hey, uh, I'll buy your house. And uh, after that person told her the house is going to be about fifteen dollars to $20,000 in repair. And this lady had brain tumor. <laughs> that's disgusting. I'll tell you, I'm still sick to my stomach right now. You know, even talking about it, that's a couple of years ago. Well, needless to say, this person took her house not for $20,000 less, thirty dollars to $40,000 less than its value. And her house was worth about $120,000, $130,000. So this lady was a senior citizen. Her, her husband died. She had brain tumor. Her days were numbered. And her daughter was obviously was going to inherit the house. So <laughs> what's really more disgusting than that is the person said, you know, I'll buy your house. He took, he took the keys from her. Thank you. And he went to, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, he took the keys, and within a few days, he said he's going to buy the house. He put dumpsters outside her house, and he started throwing all her furniture in the dumpster. And that's, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm so disgusted even thinking about it. So basically, he took, he, he took the house. He basically kicked her out of the house. They showed up to closing. She wasn't even allowed to go in her own house. It wasn't even his house yet. And this is the kind of stuff that was going on in the city. You know, it was even, even, even somebody from the police department, when I, was the, when I was appointed mayor, said, yeah, in the city it was pay to play. I tell you what, I have never been disgusted in my life when I heard that. The first time I heard it, and especially from somebody from, from the police department, I can't say who that person was. For you 
wearing a freaking badge, saying that word, it just, it just like resonated with me. Like it was bad. When I was on council, I tell you, I mean, some people in here knew I was going to run for mayor in 2017. That's a big story. That's a long story. You could probably, you know, you want, I'll give you details later about that one. Because again, I, I said, I could write a freaking book, seriously, about some of the stuff, just one year in office. But one of the things that, uh, you know, I, I did clean house, you know, I got rid of a lot of people. And I, I tell you one thing, you can, you know, one of my big models, you know, I learned, you know, lead, follow, or get the hell out of the way. You know, if you want to lead, you know, come take this freaking position, run for this office, you can have my position. Or you can follow me or get the hell out of my way because I'm fixated on fixing the city. And if you're, you know, corrupt, there's no freaking way, there's no room for you in my city or in my administration. And I can tell you, I got several investigations right now, and there's something really bad. I can't talk about any of them, obviously, because the investigation. But I, uh, you know, you guys will hear about them in the news, I'm hoping, in the next few months. So you say that you are dealing with the cases of corruption? Yes. You sure? Yes. Uh, the golf course. Could you please explain to us what's happening in the golf course project? Well, the golf course, okay, again, it's not, the mayor does not, I, I can't approve anything over $1,500 without council approval. It went out for bid net, people bid on it, and they can't present it to the council. Somebody decided they want to go in front of council. You know, it went for, uh, the, the, court, the golf course, it was trashed. It was trashed so bad, again, you know, we, we're going to post pictures before and after once we get everything up, you know, up and running. Um, it was so disgusting the way it was before, and I tell you, it was either just let it go, you know, just turn into a jungle, or just use it like, you know, as an investment for the city. You know, put some money into it and just, you know, run it as a golf course, you know, for the residents and for the, the run it as a business, but not for the city running it. You know, for the, the entities, we have two entities actually uh, that will be running the course. We got the banquet and also uh, what's called Revive is actually is under the entity of Isa Brothers who have the golf course. But is it true that the city is paying $3.2 million to the contractor? No, it's, it's false. The contractor is paying, okay, Mr. Isa is, is paying $3.5 million out of his own money. And right now he's probably put majority of the money already into the course with some of the work that he's doing. So we did pay to get the golf course itself. So the golf course, you get the banquet and the golf course. The golf course where you're actually golfing. So we're responsible for the golf course itself and also uh, to get a CFO to make And I'm going, like I said, if you have anything, you want, you want something from the city, you're not gonna get it. You know, you go by the book, you know, you go whatever it needs to get done to get it. You wanna apply for a job, don't ask me for a job, go apply online or go talk to HR. You want property, you know, we can assess it, go on bid net, you can go bid for it, and if the council approve it, it's yours. Otherwise, uh, you're not gonna get property for free. So one of the things that I want to talk about is, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, Dr. Ajami mentioned about some crime, uh, crime and some issues that we're having in the city. So I, be, I meet with my police chief and my two directors for the police department, and just, just to go back a little bit, um, I brought my police chief, I had a commissioner about God rest his soul, he passed away, you know, and one of the things that I wanted to do is I want to make my police department a world-class police department. I want people when they see a, you know, I wore a badge for about 10 years in the military, I wore military police. When I wore the badge, I wear it with honor, I wore it with honor, and I expect everybody that wears a badge to wear it with honor. So this is, this is what I want. I want when somebody sees one of our police officers, and right now we got a lot of great police officers. I'm hearing, I'm hearing a lot of compliments about our police officers that are staying behind, and they want to fight with us. They want to try to transition, propel our city forward, try to do great things for our city. So I brought in two directors. You know, one director, he retired from uh, Westland. Um, he's uh, actually in charge of patrol. And I brought in another director He's in, in charge of investigation, and he's going to do a lot of internal affairs. And this guy, he actually retired from uh, the government. He was a uh, ATF. 
He was a special, special agent in charge. He had hundreds of people that reported to him. This guy cleans the house. When he comes in, people know that he's present. And this is what I want. I want a clean house. I want to clean our city. So these guys came in, and they're, uh, you know, they're on the ground. Again, I want, I, I want to build our team. You know, um, I had several meetings. My door is always open. People come to my office all the time, employees, police officers, firefighters. You know, uh, you know, just they're asking about the state, you know, where we're going, you know, what my vision is. And a lot of them, they say that, you know, they're here for the, to stay. They want to do great things. They want to know what they can do to help propel our city forward, our police department, you know, the different uh, departments that we have. And, uh, you know, just to let you know, right now we're, uh, we have uh, at least six, uh, six candidates, you know, applied. To, uh, they went to the academy that... Uh, where we extended some offers uh, for some police officers. We got a lot of interest. Police officers actually want to come, or candidates that want to come work for the city of Dearborn Heights. We actually have right now a grant from the state that we can pay for, um, uh, for candidates that they can work for the city, they can work in a jail or do you know, anything with the city, and we can send them to the police academy, and this, uh, the, the state will pay us a grant to send them to the academy. So we just got to pay a minimal fee for their, uh, uh, f for them to work for the city. So we're going to be fully staffed. Uh, we, I think we're down about, you know, close to uh, 11 throughout the station. But one, one of the things, when I, when, I, when I became the mayor, there was a lot of police officers or somebody from the police department, and some of them, some of them left, some of them are on the road. A lot of people were upstairs, you know, they weren't doing much, you know, they were just... There was a unit that was upstairs. They were, uh, you know, again, I won't mention names. Uh, they weren't doing anything for the city. So that's one of the things that I had an issue with the previous chief is I told him I want everybody on the road. If you're not doing anything, you know, of value to the city, I want you to be on the road. And that's one of the issues that some of them have. They don't want to work. You know, they're, they wear a badge. You know, they could be, you know, they're, they're doing stuff other than law enforcement. Um, we had one person, just to give you an example, they were calling him the IT person, but when he was asked, you know, you know, where's the flash drive, they said, what the heck is a flash drive? And this guy's been in IT for the police department for several years. I mean, most of it, does, does anybody not know what a flash drive is? <laughs> so this guy was the IT person working at the police department for years, and he didn't know what a flash drive is. This is the kind of stuff, this is the kind of people you know, are leaving the city because now I told everybody, you got to be a police officer, you got to be on the road. You know, again, we have several that left, several that retired, and few that, I, that yeah, I, uh, we let go. But I can tell you, you know, we have a great team in place right now. We have a lot of great, uh, uh, great uh, prospects are coming in. We're, uh, we said we have a few offers. We have a few that uh, look like they're going to accept the offer, and we'll announce later, you know, when they're like starting dates. Uh, so for, uh, I had uh, just pulled something up here right before I came. Um, like many communities, Dearborn Heights, you know, experienced an increase in reported criminal activities. You know, uh, I tell you, I don't know what the heck happened during COVID, but just people went nuts. You know, people are going crazy with some stuff. You know, one of the things that we're having issues with, the biggest pr problem is domestic violence. And my chief says it best. Now that people are together, you know, we're fighting one another. There's brothers fighting with brothers. There's brothers fighting with sisters, sisters fighting with their parents. You know, just like the, the other day, you know, I had a, a mom that called uh, the police on her daughter because her daughter hit her. You know, she was, you know, acting violent towards the mom. So this is the kind of stuff that, you know, we're dealing with, a lot of domestic violence. Um, so during COVID, the crime, uh, crime, uh, reported crime increased uh, by 14.5% in 2021, and it slightly increased to 1.25% in 2022 as we exited the pandemic. Um, uh, again, a lot of, a lot of that uh, increase, there was increased uh, cases of uh, stolen cars. There was uh, larceny in vehicles. But I can tell you, you know, we've seen some videos that came out, you know, there's uh, some cars that we, we, we discovered that people leave their key fobs in their vehicle. And I mean, you know, that's a big no-no. You don't leave a key fob in a car because you can just, I've, I've seen it actually, I've seen a video of one of the vehicles. Somebody jumped into a vehicle 
And they just, within like 10 seconds, they were in drive and they were like moving forward with this vehicle. And that vehicle was used in another uh, 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 stolen car in just a few streets down the road. Um, a lot of, believe it or not, there's people that are leaving guns in their cars. You know, they have uh, one vehicle, they have thousands of dollars in cash in a car. There's people leaving their expensive purses that you can see visibly from, uh, from the outside. So, you know, people come through, a lot of kids from the neighborhoods, they come in, they see this, and they just go through the neighborhoods. They try to open the door. They can open the door, they grab and just leave. If they can't open the door, they go to the next vehicle. That's one of the biggest issues we have. People, don't, they don't leave their vehicles locked, and they leave their key fobs in their vehicles. Um, so one of the things my chief, uh, we, we met with, we had several community uh, outreach events, uh, some uh, town hall meetings with some residents. We had one area we identified as a red zone. It was like pretty hot zone with uh, uh, car issues, you know, breaking in cars, you know, I mean, opening cars or stealing cars. So there's a program my, my chief started, it's called DDACT, which uh, stands for Data Driven Approach to Crime and Traffic Safety. So what they did is they, they mapped the whole city and they started putting plots in, which has never been done before. This chief came in and he wanted to identify like some area. He's really big into data. He wants to see like where's the issues. Okay, let's go take everything, put everything to that area. So we showed, actually he showed, uh, we had uh, a meeting a couple weeks ago and he had PowerPoint. I was gonna bring it, but I didn't think that you guys have PowerPoint capability here, but anybody wants it, I can share it. We had in just one month, just one month with uh, the DDAC program. So we go to an area, we figured out like the hot zone area, we go after these areas. So there's a lot of police presence. They're pulling people over for, even if they don't get a ticket, they're pulling people over. And guess, you know, a lot, a lot of people come into the area. It's like, oh my God, there's a lot of police presence here. They leave, they go somewhere else. And my chief actually said it best. I'd rather people leave our city, go somewhere else, commit crimes. Don't, you know, don't, don't do it in Dearborn Heights which is, I know that's bad. But uh, as long as they leave my city, I don't care. Uh, uh, so for in one month, just one month, 90% reduction in stolen cars. 92% in larceny from auto. And 40% increase in citizens' contact, you know, with traffic stops. So a lot of police officers, they're in the streets, you know, a lot of them, my, my chief is really huge in community policing. He wants our police to be involved with the community. The first week, on, not even the first week on a job, the chief actually was at the city hall, Chief Hart. He left and he saw some uh, folks, you know, they're sitting in, you know, outside in their backyard. He actually stopped and he said, hi, you know, how you doing? You know, uh, you know I'm, I'm the new chief. So they were shocked because they've never seen anybody actually go to them and just like, you know, greet them. So this is huge, you know, this is what my chief wants to do. He wants officers to engage residents, you know, just engage, you know, uh, citizens and just make sure there's like, you know, a, a good rapport with our, our residents. And uh, we're seeing a lot of positive feedbacks from residents. They're saying a lot of police officers, they're actually, you know, they're waving at them. I mean, this is something so simple. You know, this is, uh, I mean, should be, self-explanatory, right? The police officer drives by, you know, waves at you. You know, now they're, they're actually engaging residents, they're talking to residents. Um, so right now we're gonna bring in a data, a data analyst. The data analyst is gonna really help us in the police station. They're gonna keep continuously, you know, we're gonna update residents on everything's going on. So we're gonna start putting stuff out there you know, like anything happens in the area, boom, you know, it's, now it's starting more and more. We're, we're putting it on social media. We're letting uh, residents know what's going on in their neighborhoods. So this data analyst, all they're gonna do is, anytime there's a crime, which we, we, we never had before. So <clears throat> when he came in, well, I asked him a question because this was never answered. I asked my chief, my old chief, I'm like, hey, I need to know, you know, where's your hot spots? Where's the issues with speeders? You know, where's like your accidents? Where's, you know, you know, where there's, you know, most domestic violence, you know, that none of that stuff was answered. Like I, I didn't know, I, I was never supplied. So this chief, he comes in, he's actually working on a lot of issues himself because, you know, we're trying to get our department back on track where we should be. 
you know, like 10 years ago. And he's trying to catch up, you know, with the two guys. You know, they're working around the clock trying to get us. And I can tell you, the new chief, he's actually stepped at the police station several times because he was working so late. You know, he's just like, you know what, I'd rather just sleep here in the morning. Yeah. لماذا هذه الأمسية؟ تعرفوا من زمان من يمكن كنت هون أنصو العام 2004 على 2007 بهذاك الوقت elected officials كان في عنا بتذكر زهير كان في اثنين كان في عبد الحسن هيدوس رئيس بلدية وين وكان في سوزان سرعيني سيتي كونسل ممبر بديربون غير هيك ما كانش في حدا كنا نحلق مين اوكي المهم انه عدد الالكتد اوفيشلز كان كثير محدود عد ما كانش في ولا قاضي منتخب بتذكر بال2007 يمكن وقت اللي ترشح سالم سلامي على انتخابات القضاة نزل محله شخص تاني بتعرفوا مين وكانت النتيجة انه اثنين ما نجحوا المهم كنا نحلم دائما ان يكون لنا حضور فاعل في هذه الجالية كل عمرنا كنا نحلم ان شاء الله بكرة بصير عنا قضاة ان شاء الله بصير ان شاء الله بصير الحمد لله عنا بدل القاضي صار يمكن من فوق العشر قضاة عنا اطباء ما في محل بتروحوا عليه الا بالمستشفيات العيادات كلها من اصل معظمهم الاطباء من اصول عربيه محامين كذلك مهندسين كذلك هذه السنه 2021 صار عنا انجاز ثلاث مدن ديربون ديربون هاي سام ترامك تم انتخاب رؤساء للبلديات من اصول عربيه الحمد لله الحمد لله السؤال الان ماذا جنينا بعد ان وصلنا الى هذه المناصب هل حققنا ما تطمح له الجاليه هل انجزنا حقا ما كنا نحن في دواخلنا نحلم بتحقيقه هذه الأمسية وأمسيات تالية ستأتي محاولة للإجابة على هذه الأسئلة ماذا فعلنا؟ ماذا حققنا؟ ماذا أنجزنا؟ وإذا كان هناك خلل ما أين هو؟ هذه الليلة الأمسية ستكون مع رئيس بلدية ديربون هايتس بلال بزي 
يا شباب ما بدنا نعمل مثل ما بنعمل تعمل النعامه ونتخبى ورا الحقيقه everybody knows كل الناس بتعرف انه الاوضاع هناك كثير من الاوضاع التي تحتاج الى اجابات موضوع سيفتي اند سيكيورتي ما حدا في يقول مستر ماير ما حدا في يقول انه بديربون هايتس ذيس از نوت ان ايشو ما حدا بيقول انه السيرفيسز بديربون هايت از نوت ان ايشو ما حدا بيقول انه الطرقات بديربون طبعا نحن الان لسنا في صدد محاكمه احد نحن نحاول كابناء جاليه واحده ان نتحاور نطرح اسئله نجيب على هذه الاسئله بكل احترام وبكل لباقه طبيعه الحال لان الوقت ضيق يعني نحن تاخرنا ربع ساعه اوريدي والوقت يعني عندنا بس لحدود الساعه الثامنه بعد ان بعد قليل ساقدم الماير ل يلقي كلمة وبعدها نطرح الأسئلة عليه إذا كان لدى أحدكم أي رغبة في طرح أي سؤال فليكن مكتوبا يعني لن يتسع المجال لإعطاء المجال لا لمداخلات ولا لطرح أسئلة شفوية علنية ولكن أن تكون الأسئلة مكتوبة أيها الأحبة بلال بزي انتخب رئيسا لبلدية ديربون هايتس ب 22 تاني نوفمبر 2021 قبل ذلك عين في المنصب نفسه لمدة عشرة أشهر تقريبا كما خدم في مجلس المدينة منذ سنة 2017 يحمل شهادة الإجازة والماجستير في علوم وهندسة الطيران خدم في المارينز لمدة 21 سنة تلقى العديد من الجوائز والأوسمة اشتغل أيضا في شركتي بوينغ وفورد وكان رئيسا او عضوا في العديد من المجالس ذات الطابع الخدماتي والانساني. سنستمع اولا ايها الاخوه لرئيس بلديه ديربون هايتس بلال بزي رحبوا معي مستر ماير اتس يور بوديوم. Good evening. I'll take some notes here. Thank you, Doctor. Appreciate uh, the introduction. Um, so I know Doctor uh, Ajami sent me a few questions. So basically, uh, I'm gonna just highlight you know a few things you know, where the, the city was uh, when I first took over, uh, when I was first appointed uh, to the, being a mayor. So the time when I took, uh, when I became a mayor, it was probably one of the toughest years in, in the city of Dearborn Heights. You know, we were, uh, it was, uh, we were at, during COVID time. And also uh, uh, we had uh, uh, the floods. We had the two worst floods in our city. Uh, we had thousands of homes that were flooded. Uh, as most of you seen, there was uh, trash everywhere, but both in Dearborn, Dearborn Heights, and several surrounding cities. So at that time, uh, with also we had a lot of revenue loss uh, during that during that COVID years. Um, one, one of the things you know we had, uh, so we had Plan Moran that came in, and you know we had like ARPA money. It's called the American Rescue Plan uh, money that came from the federal government because of uh, COVID. So we actually went, to, so there was like different ways that you can use the, the money. You can use some of it for revenue loss. So Plan Moraine came in, they audited, they said, you know, we, they estimated over $10 million that we lost. So you can claim the $10 million and you can actually put it in the general fund. We, we had a lot, of, uh, lot of issues. There's some stuff I'm not gonna talk about because there's some stuff is under investigation. Uh, but I can tell you, uh, there was a, uh, this, the, a lot of this, the system was broken in the city. That was one of one of the difficulties that, that you know that we had when I first came in, and uh, we had uh, close to three million dollars in deferred payments. So they were just kicking the can down the road, 
and this money we owed uh, uh, for Social Security money to the IRS. So, you know, when I took over, the IRS came knocking on my door. It's like they want their money, and, you know, you got to give the IRS gets their money first. They don't care what uh, what state you're in and, and as, as ourselves or even as the city. So when they, when they came calling, we had to pay the, three, the, the money that we owed the IRS. And on my way here, I was talking to my chief of staff about some stuff, you know, just trying to get some information so I can give you accurate data. And she was telling me that some, they're calling again that we have some more money that we, we deferred, you know, several years ago, that they're calling for, for more money. So this is some of the stuff that we were, you know, that I was dealing with the first, the first year, two years in office, just trying to give above, uh, get above water. And one of, one of the hardest things that we were dealing with is, uh, you know, when I was on council, uh, we had a lot of uh, grants that we could have pursued, you know, like just to give you an example, the lead lines. The lead lines, you know, that's like, that's a must. We got to replace them. So I remember when I was on council, you know, they put stuff in front of you. You go through the package, you know, you, tr you, you, know, you hope that, you know, everything is done correctly. So we voted to replace a lot of the lead lines. I believe we, we spent several million dollars on that line that we could have gotten grants for. And there was a like, lot, lot of other things that we could have went and got, um, uh, got grants from the U.S. government. But no, but we paid. It was taxpayers' money. Also, you know, one of the things that, you know, there's uh, some stuff that's mandated by the, by the state, you know, by Eagle, uh, the CSO, it's called the CSO project, which is you, you got to separate the, the sewer from uh, storm, and that's mandated by the state. So that's, that's multi-million dollar projects. So before me, I know the water rates are high, and the reason why they're high, there's just so much, so many disconnects. So we have two watersheds. We have the Ecorse Creek, and we also have uh, uh, the Rouge. So we have our sewers is going to two different locations. So right now, we're actually going through and we're auditing uh, a lot of things that should have been done 15, 20 years ago. We're finding out that, you know, we might be paying too much, you know, for our sewer, you know, going into like two different, uh, two different areas. So this is something that we have one of my city engineers that I brought him on from the county. He retired from uh, well, the airport, but before he was uh, county. So he's the city engineer, that, which we never had. So there's a lot of things that I brought when I became the mayor because we were uh, uh, using uh, a lot of contract work. So there was like a city, a city engineer was done by a, a contractor which they were not really looking. Uh, again, I'm not going to talk about, you know, I won't mention any names or anything like that. But they were using uh, this particular entity, and that entity was paying, uh, was basically were paying them for consulting, but they were just doing consulting. They were not giving us, you know, right, uh, uh, right data or right, right information or, like, you know, how, how to, you know, accept certain projects. Just to give you an example, the fire station, we have a fire station on Beach Daily and uh, Ford Road. Most of you probably know where the fire station is. That fire station should be condemned. You know, it should be torn down. And the reason why is because the company that actually built the fire station, they built it wrong. They put stuff underneath it, which was man-made material, which during flooding, when it, uh, when it gets wet, it expands. So it's pushing everything upwards. So there's a lot of walls, cracked walls in a, in a fire station. Uh, there's a lot of um, doors that don't open, don't close, and this is the, this is the kind of stuff that I inherited, you know. So right now we're trying to struggle, trying to figure out which way, you know, what we can do to get funding, trying to get uh, a new uh, fire station. So this this fire station was built in 1999, and right now it has to be torn down, just to show you that nobody actually inspected it, nobody. There was nobody there. Everybody was sleeping at the wheel, I guess, at that time. So we, have, we had a company that came in, and they did sampling, and they have a, a, a report. So there's a lot of things that, you know, right now we're so far uh, behind on a lot of things. You know, I'm just, like, like I said, running like 1,000 miles an hour trying to get to where we need to be. You know, there's got to be litigations. There's going to be some lawsuits on a lot of things that, you know, what they did to the city. And, you know, that one is going to be a huge lawsuit. You know, we're trying to put data together to go after the company that we paid. 
you know, what, millions of dollars to build the station. And now we have to cough up close to 14 to $15 million from our own pocket to build a fire station for our fire, to for the safety of our, uh, our residents. And uh, that just, that's just one, one of many, many things that, you know, we, we discovered that we're, you know, we're struggling, we're battling right now. So, you know, uh, Dr. Ajami, you mentioned something about like, you know, crime, you know, statistics. So when I came in, I, again, you know, there's a lot of things I can't talk about, but I can tell you one thing. You know, some people, you know, one of the most irritating things, some people are, you know, they're, they're campaigning and they're putting false information outside, you know, or, you know, to the residents. There's some police officers that retired. There's some police officers that we fired. And there's some police officers that decided to resign. And I don't want to get into the specifics, but I can tell you we got close to a dozen different investigations on some guys that were in the station. Some of them, they decided to leave, then face the consequences. I can tell you one thing. You know, I have one of the best police chiefs that anybody could have, you know, this guy can probably double his salary going anywhere in, uh, in the state of Michigan. But, you know, I interviewed with him. Uh, no, actually, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. He interviewed me to come to the city of Dearborn Heights because of the state that our police, and if you don't have a good police department, your city is, is no good. And I can tell you, there was a lot of issues. I'm getting, I'm getting, I was getting a lot of complaints from people that were bringing stuff to my attention. And now they're attacking me because of sh stuff that they brought to me about some concerns they had with, its, let's say, with a police officer, with a police old, old chief or somebody from, you know, the detectives or whatever. So, again, I'm, I'm cleaning house right now. So this is some of the stuff, you know, I learned over the, you know, in my, in my life. In, in corporate America, you know, with working for two great companies with Boeing, and also with uh, Ford and being in the Marines for, for 21 years. I've been deployed you know, several times. I learned a lot of things, and I tell you one thing, is I spent a lot of time overseas, and one of the things that I learned you know, is like to serve the people. I was serving people outside our country, people I had no idea who they were. So I decided to run, you know, when I ran for mayor or when I was appointed, I want to serve my people, my residents, my city. And and I'm, I'm going by the book. And, you know, again, you know, there's been several attacks. Somebody already talked to me about it earlier. Hey, if somebody has anything, there's a freaking downtown. They can call. I can give them the number. They can go anytime. They can bring the stuff over there. I have nothing to hide. I'm just doing everything by the book. And I can tell you there's some people, and I already did, you know, I went to the media, and I talked about this. And, again, I want to bring that up one time, and the last time I'll bring that up. If anybody has anything, just go, go, go to the authorities. Make sure that this golf course is in operable condition. So you got to make sure that it's, you, you can golf on the golf course. So the two, there's two uh, restrooms on the golf course. So there's 36 holes. There's two, there's two restrooms that on the golf course. I mean, one of them had holes in the ceiling. So this is the stuff that we had to, we had to replace. So the, at the cart paths, a lot of the cart paths were not, you know, where you drive the carts to get from one hole to the next. Some of them were not paved. So we're paving all of it, so that's the city expense. Okay. Uh, how many lawsuits are, uh, has the city been subject to since you took off as a, as a mayor, and why? Okay, so when I first, okay, let's go back here. When I first came in to be the mayor, okay, I, like I said, I made a lot of changes. I, when I walked into my office, every drawer you opened, there was a lawsuit in it. There were, or there was a potential lawsuit. There was dozens, dozens of lawsuits or potential lawsuits when I, fir when I first became the mayor. There was stuff that was needed, like discovery, from months before I took over that was just sitting in somebody's drawer. They just didn't care. So right now, there's one lawsuit, there's one active lawsuit that I just did a deposition on last, you know, week or so, week, couple weeks. You know, it's, you know, obviously I can't talk about it. It's the lawsuit from an employee that, uh, that was uh, terminated or his service is not required. I know you think it's funny. Answer the question. Okay. I'm answering the question. If you just quit, you know, heckling over there. Mm -hmm. uh, he's running for counsel, so he's got to make his, you know. So anyway... 
Uh, so we, we had, um, I filed a couple lawsuits, you know, because of certain things. So right now there's only, there's one lawsuit that is, is active with court. And there's one, uh, there's two lawsuits. It was filed by the police department, but they, they dropped them or they're dropping them. Okay. I have two more questions because the time is running up. Uh, first, uh, how do you evaluate your relation with the city council? I... Are you on good terms? Are well, you? I'm doing what's best for the city, and I present everything, whatever you know. I have, I present it, and you know what? I don't. I'm I'm pretty good with everybody. So. But do you think they are cooperating with you? You are cooperating with them? Well, they're working. They're working good. I mean, every, most majority of them have uh, their their sight on, on the city, trying to propel our city forward as well. The services in the city, the service the city is providing to its inhabitants. How do you evaluate them? Well, they're very high priced. No, no, I, I, it is. But I can tell you, we wasted we wasted a lot of money in the last few years. You know, stuff that we kind of, you know, there's a lot of money that we we could have allocated to do certain things. You know, just like the lead lines, we spend millions, millions of dollars in just updating lead lines. We could have gotten grants for all of that stuff. So that money could have been used for the city. You know, there was a company that was supposed to be doing cleaning for sewers. I looked at it the other day, just in the time they were there, they, we spent almost $8 million and they were cleaning the same sewers over and over and over. The minute it was brought up by myself and another councilman, Guess what? That company just disappeared, and they were housed out of DPW. So that money, the $8 million that we wasted, could have been used for city services. You know, we, we have a lot of work to do, but we're doing everything we can with the money that we have. You know, we have a lot of, a lot of waste that happened in the past, and now, you know, it's all, like I said, it's, it's our administration that has to clean all of it. A lot of people elected you to be the mayor. Yes. Are you still in good term with them? And what yes. do you think next term um, they will re-elect you? I, I can tell you one thing. You know, there's, I think I have more backers now than I did before. There's a lot of people that uh, they come to the city hall. You know, most people that are in the city hall, what, you know, two days every two weeks or so. I mean, two hours every two weeks, three hours. We... I encounter a lot of residents. I walk the hallways, I talk to residents. I'm all over the city. And a lot of people, there's people that, they said, you know, I didn't support you, but you know what, I support you right now. I see what's going on. I've seen a lot of changes. I've seen the potential the city has. Okay. So well, I'm very confident in the way we're going. Okay, I started by the questions, by one question about uh, Dearborn Heights before Bill Bezzi and with Bill Bezzi. Now, the last question, Dearborn Heights. Bill Bezzi now and the future. What? Well, what do you have in mind? What do you have in your pocket for that? Well, we, we have a lot of, we're applying for a lot of grants. You know, we have a lot of grants right now that we're, we're trying to pursue. And um, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that we, the, in, in the past, a lot of money was taken from the, like, see, the water fund. A lot of stuff that should have been done through grants, like, like I said, you know, the lead line. You know, so that's why it increases a lot of uh, water rates. So there's a big project that we're working on right now, trying to separate, you know, when I mentioned earlier about the two different watersheds, you know, I think we're overpaying for certain things. But once we figure, like, everything out, you know, trying to get a team to manage our, uh, the, the two projects to figure out, like, where the, you know, how much, like, you're really spending in water and sewer, and how much you have to pay for these services. We're, we're heading for a, it's a, we're heading to a good, you know, good way in the front, I mean, in the, moving forward, there's a lot of great things happening in the city. You know, we have a great staff. We have a lot of, you know, like I said, the police department, if you don't have a good solid police department, we have a great solid fire department. We just try to get the same with our police department. We have three great leaders right now in the police department. And like I mentioned earlier, a lot of police officers approach me and they want to stay in the city. They want to move forward. They want to do great things. So the chief is already has ideas for them, like what we can do once we're fully staffed. You know, they, we got to do a lot of great things. We're going to have like task forces. We're going to have people assign different things, you know, so people can 
be positive, feel good about their job, you know, they can just look forward to, you know, coming to work. Okay. I want to thank you, Mr. Mayor, for oh, this, uh, this event. I want to thank each and every one of you. I want to thank our sponsors, uh, Dr. Nassif Fawaz, who sponsored our events, uh, Elite Sports and iCode. بتشكركم جميعا شكرا لكم و... والى اللقاء في الشهر المقبل ان شاء الله الشهر الجاي بكون معنا عبد الله حمود رئيس بلديه بون بيزن الله ثانك يو سلام عليكم